Let's begin by talking about cranial nerves one and cranial nerve number two. Cranial nerve one is known as the olfactory nerve. Olfactory means olfaction or smell. This picture to demonstrate is a mid-sagittal section of that nasal through the nasal cavity from a medial view. So the origin and course, the olfactory nerve arises from receptors in the nasal cavity, which includes the superior nasal concha and part of the nasal septum. It then sends its neurons through these holes in the ethmoid bone called the cribiform foramina, from the cribiform plate, and the holes are the cribiform foramina. Neurons then synapse in olfactory bulb and tract and send the information to the brain to allow you to smell. This is actually an extension of the telencephalon, an extension of the forebrain. Uh, this picture in the bottom left, you can see the cribriform foramina in our mid-sagittal illustration. And there's the olfactory bulb on one side and the cribriform foramina on the other to get an idea of where we can see these nerves. Now, the olfactory nerve is responsible for SS, special sensory smell. The only place you smell is this olfactory epithelium in your nasal cavity. If you knock out the olfactory nerve, your clinical findings is you don't smell. It's called anosmia. The optic nerve. So here we have an inferior surface or view of the brain, and there's our yellowed area, which is the origin and course, so there's our eyeball, and then the retina is somewhere at the back, and it's going to course, and it becomes, the retina then becomes the optic nerve, which traverses this opening in the skull called the optic canal. Here's an anterior view of the skull. You close up at the orbit. There's the optic canal. That's the opening where the optic nerve traverses from the orbit, through the optic canal and is now inside the cranial vault. That optic nerve courses from the optic canal to this X, which is called the optic chiasm, or chiasma, which means an X. And the optic chiasm is significant because some retinal pathways course from the, from the retina and stay on the same side, or the ipsilateral side of this tract. And up the optic chiasm doesn't cross, but stays on the same side and goes to the occipital lobe. However, some retinal pathways at the optic chiasm decussate or cross over to the contralateral side and then course to the occipital lobe. And so what's significant is that optic chiasm sure serves as a decussation point, a crossing point for some retinal pathways coursing from the retina to the contralateral side of the brain. Visual sensory information courses to the ipsilateral or contralateral side of the brain at that optic chiasm. That's just saying what I just said except it's in text and it's in front of you. All right, now the optic tract is what is the part of the um, visual pathways that course from the chiasm to the occipital lobe, okay? And there we go, optic tract. I did it twice, I'm not sure why. So if you knock out your optic nerve, then that results in blindness. And if you're blind, if you shine a light in the eye, then no sensory information can get to the brainstem to allow your pupil to constrict when you shine a light in the eye. So therefore, they're blind and they lose the pupillary light reflex. There's also visual field problems, which I'll leave for another class I'm not test on. So technically, for the cranial uh, sensory nerve, la -la -la -la, the central nervous system origin, cranial nerves 1 and 2 are not cranial nerves. They're extensions of the telencephalon and diencephalon, respectively. Therefore, they don't function and do reflexes to the exact same extent as the other cranial nerves 3 through 12 in the brainstem. But early anatomists thought they were cranial nerves, so we named them. So they'll always be a little bit different.